Last week, I put out this post, which got just a little bit of attention for me. And this is a fairly tame post. I'm being a bit snarky about Rel finally deprecating Exorg, but it's nothing that crazy. It's just a screenshot of the documentation. It's not a rant. It's not a rant like Hector Martin went on over on Mastodon. Now, you may have seen this post over on Pharonix because they wrote an article surrounding all of this. It was something like Asahi Linux developer tells users to stop using Xorg. Now, the comments, as you would expect from Pharonix, devolved into absolute chaos, being like, no, Xorg is good. No, Wayland is good. I can't use Xorg. It doesn't work for my setup. No, your setup is bad. Get a better setup. Basically, you know, normal Pharonix things. But this post is just the start. This is just the tip of the iceberg. It keeps going. So... I'm going to be cutting things up, I'm going to be removing the part specifically about Asahi, just because the main focus on X, I think, is more generally interesting. But let's get started. It's all but unmaintained, broken in fundamental ways that cannot be fixed, unsuited to modern display hardware like these machines, and we absolutely do not have the bandwidth to spend time on it. If you've not seen it yet, a few months back, I did a video about Xorg development. It is, let's say, not super healthy. Now, 2023 is empty because the data for this hadn't been collected yet, but this was 2022. This is like 150 commits over the entire year. That's not great. Yes, some Xorg things work better on other platforms, other platforms being things that are not the Apple devices. That doesn't mean Xorg isn't broken. It means those platforms have spent years working around Xorg's failings. We don't have time for that. Now, later in the post, in one of the posts at some point, he does mention accessibility. This is totally fair and a good reason to keep using Xorg. Accessibility is being worked on on the Wayland side, but if it's not up to where you need it to be, totally fair. I would also add NVIDIA support, which is getting better, but NVIDIA support on that list as well, and network transparency, which is there on Wayland through things like WePipe, but might not be at the level you need it to be at distributions and major desktop environments are already dropping Xorg support. It's pointless to try to support it well today on a new platform. I don't think this is entirely accurate. I know that RHEL has deprecated Xorg, but I can't think of any others that have right now. I would imagine that PopOS would do it after they start shipping their new Cosmic Rust desktop, and then if with GTK5, they do actually go through with dropping X11 support, that would mean that GNOME would end up dropping X11 support. And if that happens, then Fedora, Ubuntu, and all of these other distros that use GNOME, they would drop it as well. But that's probably a good five plus years away. On the KDE side, I've not heard anything about QT dropping X11 or KDE just doing it themselves. It's entirely possible Hex knows something that I don't, or he might just be running with the fact that Rel's dropping it and then just expanding that out. I don't really know. Either way, if someone knows, do tell me. Now, even with these talks of Xorg being left in the dust and moving over to Wayland, we are not talking about X11 going away. X Wayland will continue to be supported for legacy client apps, and we do plan to spend time on optimizing the X Wayland experience, and X Wayland is actually being developed. But for anything that goes beyond displaying windows, compositors, IMs, input management, desktop environments, etc., Please use native Wayland applications, since X Wayland will never integrate properly for those things by design. I've uh, certainly noticed some issues myself, like uh, running DMenu, for example. DMenu, even though it's just a launcher, for some reason, it just spawns in a weird location on my screen, and I don't know why, but it only does it on my like main monitor. Sometimes on my main monitor, it's also invisible. I don't know why. Also, my uh, my GTK2 file manager, PCMANFM, um, yeah, I can't drag files into Wayland Windows because X Wayland. 
And all of that could be dealt with if I just stop using those applications because there is really good Wayland equivalents of them. I just haven't done it yet. That's pretty much it. That's the only reason why I haven't. I just like what I have and haven't fixed it. It hasn't bothered me enough to go and fix it yet. Here is the typical X11 user argument. But Wayland can't support my setup. Lists a bunch of things with working Wayland equivalents. Like, look, I get that we all like our choice of software, but unless you're planning on getting together with your friends and the authors of those X11 only apps and taking over Xorg maintenance yourself, you are all on a sinking ship and no amount of hanging on is going to make it stop sinking. Xorg is dying because nobody wants to maintain it anymore. Volunteer yourself or accept its fate. This is something I've brought up many times before. If you actually want Xorg to keep going, go and help development. That is the only way it's going to happen. But the funny thing about it is there are still people today that use sysv init or sys5 init, whatever you want to call it. And those people are going to use it until the end of time because for them, it's still doing what they're doing and it's fine. Now, that's a much simpler example, is not an entire display server, but the point is still there. If something is still working for some people, there are always going to be people that keep using it. Don't forget, there are still people running Windows 7. Go look at all the people angry that Steam is going to stop supporting Windows 7. They shouldn't be angry, they just shouldn't be using Windows 7. And yes, Xorg is still very far away from that point. It is still getting a little bit of development and most importantly, is still being supported by the GPU driver developers. It's still being supported in Mesa and it is still being supported by Nvidia. When that stops happening and modern hardware stops working on Xorg, that is when you're going to have a serious problem. When that time happens, that's when you are going to have to stop using it or choose to just keep running older hardware. And there are going to be people that do go and use that. And for older systems like older ThinkPads, it's still going to work fine. And even when everybody else leaves, there is still a bit of development being done over on the OpenBSD side with Zenakara. And from my understanding, no serious work is being done to get Wayland supported over on that side. Over on FreeBSD, there is a Wayland compositor called Hikari. I don't know if it works that well. All I know is that it exists. But my focus is on the Linux desktop as this is what most people are using. Now, this right here is one of my pet peeves and clearly it bothers Hector as well. There was a time when Wayland was missing or clunky at pretty basic desktop functionality. That time is in the past, mostly in the past. There are a couple of things. Xorg brokenness is quickly surpassing missing stuff in Wayland. Also, if you have this idea that Wayland can't do foo and you haven't checked again in the past six months, there's a good chance you're wrong. Seriously, a bunch of stuff has been improving and getting fixed over the past year especially. You know, things like screen sharing in Discord, Teams and Skype. That stuff is being worked on with the X Wayland video bridge, which just skips the whole Discord not doing things properly and provides a way to capture Windows and desktops for you. Or how about the fact that two years ago, OBS didn't work on Wayland. Like, you could use it to capture your face and uh, X Wayland windows, but like, I couldn't do this. I couldn't capture my desktop. It just didn't work. And now it does. Will you find things that don't work properly today? Absolutely. I have no doubts that if you just go looking a little bit, you will find something. Even just surface level things like NVIDIA drivers being a bit wonky, or XDG portals being a bit wonky, or other things being a bit wonky. Yes, you will find them, but the pace of improvement has only been increasing. And a lot of those things that were a problem six months ago, not a problem anymore. But a lot of people just have outdated information. So my previous toots ended up on Pharonix. And here come the entitled users saying, how dare you tell me to switch to Wayland? Repeat after me. Xorg is dead. 
it is unmaintained, it is buggy, and those bugs are not getting fixed. This is from its own developers. Keep in mind, the Wayland developers are the X11 developers. They are the same people. Wayland is developed under the Xorg Foundation. And the reason why nobody is developing Xorg is those developers have shifted from that project over to focusing on Wayland and X Wayland. The people previously working on Xorg are now working on Wayland. Oh, I didn't actually read that part. <laughs> that wasn't intentional. They are literally part of the same organization. I know it's a meme at this point, basically, but just don't forget, they are literally the same people. And I kind of wish the Xorg Foundation would change its name. I don't know what they would change it to. Maybe like Linux graphics something or something. I don't know. I'm, I, I don't know how to name things. Um, but make it so it's not intrinsically linked to Xorg so this confusion can just go away. Also, I want to emphasize that X Wayland is going to stay for a long time. Today, I'm's input method editors work in Chromium on X Wayland on Asahi out of the box, but not on native Wayland. I think there's some way to fix it, but I don't know. There is absolutely no problem with using X Wayland where it works better. Absolutely. In the cases of, say, my browser, which is a bit funky, and you might notice from time to time the bar up here just turns black, uh, that only happens on the Wayland version. I don't know why. I'm just going to swap it back to X Wayland because it works functionally identical, but doesn't have that problem. There is a massive ecosystem of X11 applications and nobody expects them to go away anytime soon, if ever. Upstream X developers already have X Wayland on a separate release schedule because it's expected to get almost all the attention that goes into X these days. Really, the only thing that would go away with fully migrating to Wayland are the things that cannot really make any sense or cannot really be used inside of X Wayland, like like the XOR window managers or X configuration tools or other things that only really make sense running on X, like an X screen locker, which you could theoretically run in X Wayland, but you want a Wayland screen locker because the X Wayland one, you could just close the window. It's pretty hilarious seeing so many anti Wayland people think this is a parallel to System D or Pulse Audio or whatever i.e. some people deciding to invent the new shiny because they think they can do better, which is often the case, mind you, especially with System D and Pulse Audio. They're definitely a uh, better solution. Pipewire is much better, but is what it is. And not realize that Wayland devs are literally former Xorg developers. These are the people that understand all the problems with Xorg, and that's why they stopped working on Xorg. Everyone actually working on Linux graphics agrees native Xorg is dead. It's not some coup or takeover. It's practically a meme in Linux graphics that nobody dares touch or maintain Xorg anymore. And someone asked, why is this? Hector replies by saying, because it turns out the decisions made almost 40 years ago don't really work out today. And you can't keep using old systems forever and keep adding on more hacks and workarounds. At some point, you need to start from scratch. The fun thing with Pulse Audio and System D is they happened so long ago, and they're so ingrained into what Linux is nowadays, it doesn't really matter what the origin is. Nobody really cares if System D was a coup to take over Linux, because it came along, it did things better and now everyone uses it, and they're happy with it. So, it is what it is. Now, I can't speak for Hector, but I want to make something clear about myself. I am not anti-Xorg, I'm not anti-X11, or anything related to X. If tomorrow, all of the now Wayland developers decide, okay, this Wayland thing was a dumb experiment, let's go back to Xorg, we know it works, we know it's solid, and just keep working on that, I'm going to be fully in support of Xorg, but the fact of the matter is that that's just not going to happen. Right now, Linux graphics is about Wayland, and Wayland is where we are heading to in the future. Xorg was a great past, and it is going to be with us for a long time into the future. 
but that doesn't mean that we should just be holding on to it forever. I highly recommend you go and just try out Wayland and see what it's like nowadays. That doesn't mean you have to commit to it. That doesn't mean you have to go and delete all your old X stuff. But if you have not tried it recently, go ahead and do so and see what the experience is like. I know there is going to be some arguments, it always ends up happening, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you run Xorg? Do you run Wayland? Do you swap back and forth depending on what you're doing? And if you do use Xorg, let me know why. Is it because of Nvidia? Is it because of network transparency? Is it because of accessibility? Any of those reasons make total sense. Waypipe might address the network transparency issues though, but let me know. So if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribe Silly Barra Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Hyperland is better than Sway. <laughs>